Well, our guest on this portion is Terry Bowers, an old friend who just happens to be in charge of the Oklahoma Aquarium. Terry, welcome. Thank you. I didn't mean to imply you're old, I just meant... Oh, I am, but that's okay. No, you're not. You're just a young thing. We got big things happening at the aquarium. Is it still... I know that when we came out, what, two years ago, you were still wanting to let folks know you were there. Right. Is it still a problem? You know, here's what's interesting to me about the Oklahoma Aquarium. We're a very large aquarium compared to others around the country. Not your big standards like Shad in Chicago or Monterey in California, but compared to most aquariums in the central part of the country, we're pretty large. Yet we have one of the lowest admission prices comparatively, mm -hmm. and people are still surprised by that. They think that we might be smaller because we are inland, sure. but we're actually pretty large. And in um, March, we're going to be even larger when we open the sea turtle exhibit. Well, we have some video that, that perhaps as you watch this, you can help narrate it for sure. us. Sure. Uh, well, right now we're looking at um, one of the living coral tanks where we have a great display of very tropical fish. And we have almost every ecosystem in the world that is reachable. Um, shown in the aquarium. So you may learn about something like native Oklahoma fish, but you may also learn about fish that are in the Caribbean or the Pacific or the deep cold depths of a kelp forest. So it's not just a tour of beauty, it's also a tour of the world. Something just came to mind. I'm sorry, I gotta lay this out and please don't laugh. I read a story in the New York Times back before Christmas about uh, an interesting phenomenon that's occurring in our oceans around the world, old shipwrecks are disappearing. Hmm. Uh, they go in to find them. I'm talking about World War II and world, you know, pre-World War uh, II craft that, you know, were sh sunk because of shelling or torpedoes. The markings are still on the seafloor, but the craft is gone. And what they've finally figured out is, crews are going in, s cutting these things up salvaging them, taking them out and selling these things in a salvage operation with no regard whatsoever to the lives lost or anything about it. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, everybody was kind of, you know, every country was saying, no, let's leave them alone mm -hmm. because essentially they're graves. Mm -hmm. But it's just one of those sidebars I, I'm full of. I'm going to be a big hit at the nursing home. you got to trust me. Well, th th something interesting, they're not only hallowed ground for those lives lost, mm -hmm. they also serve as habitats That's true. for the ocean life. And so they could be disturbing ocean life as well when that happens. And so your, your point is not lost even before the nursing home. <laughs> I'm going to be a big hit. Yeah. Any nursing home <laughs> out there that wants somebody that knows a lot of trivia, give me a call. We have, you have, a big exhibit coming, or a major exhibit, that's going to open when? In March. Uh, the official ribbon cutting is actually scheduled for February 28th. We're going to be launching a school contest. We're going to let children uh, compete to be the first kiddos to come in this. This is Sea Turtle Island. And what you're seeing now are some progressive pictures of how our staff has built this from a, an empty concrete shell of the tank using PVC as you see there to form the base structure of artificial coral that will make up the beautiful part of the exhibit and you can see already as we went from that blank gray tank to how it's gel coated to be waterproofed then color is applied to those coral structures uh, where you saw the blue that was covering windows those are not a weird fish those are legs of some of our volunteers who have uh, given their time by getting into the smaller areas to help. And that's how it looked about a week ago. Uh, these are the two loggerhead sea turtles that we've had living behind the scenes at the aquarium for quite a while. Uh, they can live to 75, maybe older in captivity. So we will have them for, for some time in this exhibit. It's going to be so immersive. When you walk in, it will be as if you stepped off a cruise ship or an airplane onto a tropical island. Really? With a boardwalk and three viewing levels. And if you're feeling feisty, you can even crawl into the underwater observation station and see the sea turtles and the 
other fish that are in the exhibit from really? underwater. Mm -hmm. What a nice planning thing yeah. that uh, is. Oh gosh, that's great. And uh, that, that's in March, you say it'll be available. Right, so I'm not stressed at all in the final few weeks. No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah, I'll go to the nursing home with you maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we didn't talk about this the first time we were together, but what is the future of the aquarium? Where do you see it going from here? Only bigger and better. Almost immediately after opening Sea Turtle Island, we'll begin renovations on the existing coral reef. It was one of the first concrete structures put into place at the aquarium. So salt water being a very corrosive uh, environment, that rock work is breaking down and we'd need to refurbish it. So instead of just fixing it, we're going to make it a new habitat. It will become a South Pacific reef and that is slated to open in 2018. After that, we'll begin working on some renovations in Aquatic Oklahoma. So that will be 2019 into 2020. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll keep going from there. We have a strategic plan to continue to enhance or add on uh, to make it even more of an entertaining and educational destination. Well, I have to tell you, I truly believe in my heart that the aquarium should be a required stop for anybody who has a relaxation problem because every time I go through, all of a sudden I become mellow. You know, I've got that fish happens? all around me. It happens. Yeah. I, okay, I know it's rare, <laughs> but, but there's just something about it all that you just kind of give in to it as you go from exhibit to exhibit. And sure, you're taking it in, you're learning, and it's quite an experience at the same time it's the movement. Water. We are all drawn to water. More of the planet is covered by water, about 70 percent. And so even here in Oklahoma, water is so critically important, whether it's our lakes, streams, rivers, all the way to the ocean. And so that's what we focus on with our educational programs and our messaging, is that even though we're far from the ocean, we're very connected, no matter where we are. Yeah, and the tragedy, you know, we're so short of water right now in the aquifer that runs through the western part of the state. Scientific estimates are it's down halfway. It's not being replenished. Oklahoma has more shoreline than any other state in the country. Right. We need water, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it's going to be the new oil eventually. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the conservation message comes in. Mm -hmm. We have an educational program called Think Blue to Go Green. Go Green is a very common phrase, people know what that means, recycle, conserve energy. They sure. know what going green means, but if you really want to be green, you have to think about the blue because water is a critical component in all of that. And so that's our, mm -hmm. um, you'll, we have a little icon that says think blue to go green and we have it throughout the aquarium when you can note just small ways that you can help even in Oklahoma. Have you seen that uh, cable show where they go in and build aquariums? Uh -huh. in, individual homes. Sure. Uh, I, I watched one the other night where they built it for this guy that does puppets, you know, like Charlie McCarthy and Edgar Bergen and all that. And he had miniatures of his, you know, Akbar, the, the terrorist and everything in the bottom of the tank. Because he said, hey, they made me the money to buy this. <laughs> I want them seen. And, and so he sunk them in the tank. He okay. sunk them in the tank. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> They're there. So yeah. you can draw and see the fish and, the, and all that. Oklahoma has an incredible array of aquatic life. Mm -hmm. Virtually all of it's represented at the aquarium. We have an entire gallery that is dedicated to native species. And so that means from the very smallest fish that you might find in a creek to the ancient paddlefish. We have uh, alligator gar, alligator snapping tur turtles, and then one of the really new stars that's yet to be on exhibit but will be soon is Rocky, uh, a little beaver kit that was rescued by Wild Heart Ranch. And uh, we needed one in our Ozark Stream exhibit. So we've had some pictures of him and videos of him on our Facebook page. And so he'll be on exhibit soon. Well, wow, I'd love to see that. How do they transport large fish? Very carefully. Why? Well, I... <laughs> How'd you do that? Very well. <laughs> yes. Well, it depends on the species. Some, they are able to get in transport slings. They kind of look like a stretcher that you would think a person would go on. They're able to catch them out 
and then put them in a transport tank with water and move very quickly to wherever their uh, new tank is. Others, they may have to lower the water level and catch them out that way. So it really depends on the species. Terry, thank you. My pleasure. No, it's all mine and ours. And we're and so You're going to come see here. me when Sea Turtle Island opens. Oh, I'll be there. All right. I'll be there. I'm not going to make a snide remark like they taste like chicken. I won't do that. I won't do that. We could feed you to the sharks, see if you taste like chicken. Yeah. <laughs> That's all the time we have for this edition of Perspectives. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>